Hi, this is Pastor Ray, pastor of the Impact Center. And I just want to invite you to come and get a revelation from the throne room of God. It's such a blessing to see you walk in our doors. And I just encourage you to pray, hear God. And if God tells you to come to the Impact Center where Jesus reigns and the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, I encourage you to come. Be obedient to God because your breakthrough could very well be out of your obedience to God. So I hope and pray that I see you here at the Impact Center where Jesus reigns. God bless. So she, they normally sit on this side. Uh, this is predominantly the Latin section, just so you guys know. But uh, they sit on this side and they've been really faithful. So I shot them a text this morning just wondering where they were at. And it just so happened he, he told me that her face got really swollen and they couldn't do anything in Lawton. So he took her to Mangum and uh, they're working on whatever the situation is with her. So I told him, I said, look, man, we're going to pray. We're her family. Amen? And because we're her family, we need to extend our prayers, our agreement in the promise that God has given us that through the blood of Jesus, she is already healed. So what we're going to pray for, and we're going to come into alignment is that the manifestation would come and come quickly. Amen? So, just I just want y'all to raise your hands. And you guys pray. Pray in your heavenly language. Uh, you don't have to pray within yourself. You can pray out loud and stuff. Because I want her to know that her impact center family is standing in the gap. Amen? That's what we talked about just a little while ago. So, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we exalt you, we magnify you. Because you said in all things to give you thanks. Lord, I don't know the situation, I don't know the specifics. But what I do know is that you made a covenant with your children. You made a covenant with Becky. You said that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, what he bore on his body was for her healing. So, Lord, we come into alignment with you now, with that covenant, and we declare that in the name of Jesus, the manifestation of the promise that she is healed would come and come quickly and would come speedily. That she would not have to wait any longer, that her face would get back into the place that you created it to be, God. God, you are faithful, you are true, you're a covenant God, and when we line up with you and with your word, the manifestation of heaven will come to the earth, Lord. So I thank you this day that this body of believers has come in one accord for one person, your daughter Becky, to be totally, totally and completely healed and whole this day. In Jesus' name, and we that agree would say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Glory to God. If y'all uh, feel me jump, it's probably because my phone vibrated and he texts me and it's in my pocket. So, you know, I want to talk about the title of this message is Aligning the Remnant and the Misfits. Okay, and I know you might think, what? Remnants and Misfits. And maybe some of you that uh, work with sewing things together, you're thinking, well, remnants and misfits is, you know, what you normally throw away. Um, with carpets, you know, there's sometimes you get a piece, you cut it, and before you know it, you've cut it so much that all you got is a remnant. Okay? So if I could get uh, Jacob, I hope he found you somebody who's pretty strong. Paul's pretty strong. <laughs> I want y'all to pick pick up this lightweight that's over here. Thank God that it rose. <laughs> it's all there? Yeah, you, you ready? Paul's like, hold up. Maybe I should have got a kiss for my baby. Y'all got it? Y'all need me to pick it up? That's what I'm talking about. Just bring it over here. Perfect. 
Church, look at Paul using his back. Ooh, yeah. You, you, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to use this in an illustration. Uh, I'm not going to lift it. Because uh, because I know, Mac, I just can't. I don't want to do that. Not here. Not here. Not today. Not today, say. Not today. Um, but I am going to use it in an illustration because I think it's important, I believe, to always give you a visual. Amen? Amen. It's kind of like if you go on a trip, you pull up the GPS, right? I guess y'all already know where y'all going. So good, let's just wrap it up. Everybody wants to know where they're going. You know, I know even when I go to Oklahoma City, I pull up a GPS that tells me when there's cops around. See, I don't need a radar detector. I pull that up. It tells me when construction. I use a GPS. I know you guys are super smart, but I just like using it. Pastor Rochelle gets mad because sometimes that lady talks to me a way she shouldn't talk to me. And Pastor Rochelle's like, turn her off and stuff. But I believe in always showing you where we're going. Amen? Because most people are visual people. And one thing I really begin to um, understand and learn from God and from uh, my rabbinical apostolic covering uh, uh, rabbi, he, um, he we started talking about spiritual covering and spiritual alignment. And there's nothing wrong with spiritual covering. If that's the term that you use, run with it. I believe in spiritual alignment. I've been saying it for almost four years now. Um, that when we come into alignment with God, things begin to work according to His plan and His purpose. Amen? It's almost like, and Minister Crystal brought it up in our meeting today, and I brought it up while I was talking to somebody, that sometimes when you get in a car accident, like my brother David did, and, um, him and his family, uh, you go to a chiropractor, and they, they realign your back. Yes. Have y'all ever went, who, have, who, who has ever gone to a chiropractor? Raise your hand. If, does it feel really good when they're aligning you? No, not after. I'm talking about when the process. It doesn't feel good. It hurts. I remember I had a guy that was realigning my body, and man, he, he put this big old body in positions. I'm like, uh, that don't exist, dude. And he hurt me. But afterwards, I felt really, really good. Well, he brought my body back into alignment. Okay? So, we see it in the natural. We also see it with those of you that have vehicles. If you don't get your car aligned, it'll pull to the left or to the right. And your wife or your husband might be thinking you're driving crazy. But the reality is that there's no alignment. Your tires are even wear, 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 wear bad. That's right. So you have to take your vehicle in, they put it on a machine, and it costs you to get realigned. See, y'all didn't get that one. That went straight over your head. To get realigned with God, it is going to cost you something. It's not like God says, Oh, I just love Max so much, so I'm just going to align him. No. It's going to cause Matt to do something with his life to get under the alignment of where God is. Amen? So we have to understand that in alignment, it's going to cost you. There's a price to pay. Okay? I want to give you some definitions so you understand what some of these words mean. For example, misfits. A person who is not suited or is unable to adjust to the circumstances of his or her particular situation. Y'all see that? That's a misfit. Basically, here's what some of us have been called. You're an oddball. You're a freak. You're a weirdo. You're a loser. You're a different breed. You're peculiar. The Bible calls us peculiar. But it means, biblically, that you're God's own. So, as I look out here, I see a bunch of misfits. I see people that weren't called to fit in. You're trying to fit in and you're wondering, why is this hurting me? Because you're not called to fit in. 
Remnants, a group of people considered refugees, a subgroup, a sect. Here's some of the words, leftovers, scraps, odds and ends, left behind, excess, dross. I want you to see how you fit and I fit as being misfits and remnants. We haven't been accepted all our lives. We haven't been accepted with our family. We haven't been accepted in churches. We haven't been accepted in, in business. In some of our workplaces, we're not accepted. You know why? Because we're peculiar. Because we're a bunch of oddballs. Because we're freaks. We're not like everybody else. Even though you try to be. God didn't call you to try to be like this world. Amen? Amen? Let me talk to you about alignment. An arrangement of forces in relation to one another. The act of aligning or state of cooperation with a common cause or viewpoint, the proper positioning. I want you to see that because I want you to understand something. That's how it is here at the Impact Center. We're coming into alignment with the heart of God. You might not see and agree with everything I do, and that's okay. That's, I'm okay with that. Because let me tell you something. I don't agree with everything you say and do either. But I have to love you. I have to embrace you. And here's the thing. I want to. I have a desire in my heart to be in relationship with you so that we can together fulfill the mandate that God has placed for our lives. Amen? Amen. I've said this from day one. Every joint supplies. That's scriptural. That means that you have something that I need in my life. You have a supply that God has given you that I need. And I have a supply in my life that you need. That will not manifest until we come into alignment together to fulfill the call of God in our lives. Amen? Amen. So I need your help as much as you need mine. So I'm going to show you something that today, this morning, there was a preacher that was talking about, and it just so blessed me in how he did it. Uh, Matt, come up here. Stand on this, sir. He, no, turn towards me. Go ahead. <laughs> here's here's what, I, what he was saying. Two angels came together. And this is scriptural. I didn't hear the scripture he said it. I didn't have time to look it up. You can look it up. Homework. But two angels came together, and there was the mercy seat in the middle, okay? And these angels came together, and just stick your arms out like that, and he spread his wings, and the other angel spread its wings, and they were together. They didn't look at each other, they kept looking at the mercy seat. They didn't have to focus on one another, they would focus on the mercy seat, which is Christ. God was in the middle of what was happening. I will not agree with everything that Mac does in his life. Mac may not agree with everything I do, but we are agreement, agreeing and aligning with one thing, that God is going to be the center focus of our life. Can we say amen? Amen. See, people might not agree. Well, why does he have to bring weights? Why does he have to have treasure's chest? Why does he have to take up offering? Why does he have to always talk about our sin? Why does he always have to bring correction? I think he's, con he's uh, condemning me. Let me tell you. Why? Because we preach the truth. The only thing that's going to free you from the hell that you're in and the sin that you're living is the Word of God. It's not going to be a psychiatrist. 
It's not going to be you popping pills. God can free you from your mess. But you have to come into alignment. And you have to be willing to do exactly what God tells you to do. The reason why we're out of alignment, I'm going to go back to it, we've lost the fear of God. Because when you fear of God, you sense, like I do when my back is hurting and something's out of whack, I sense it, I feel it, I know something is happening. So I have to tell Pastor Rochelle, baby, would you walk on my back? <laughs> and see, you know when you fear the Lord and you're walking with God, you know when you're not in alignment with Him. You'll say, well, I don't feel God. Well, God, God, God you, I, don't, I don't feel that you're by me. God, I, I, don't, I don't feel that you're hearing my prayers. God's saying, I hear your prayers, but you're the one that's not next to me. See, we have a perception that God is supposed to draw near to us. You can read it in the book of James, and it says that we're to draw near to God first, and then He'll draw near to us. But we're putting in our God, we're like, here's what we're doing. We're sitting in a chair expecting God to do something. And God's expecting you to do something. So you're, you're just both sitting there. God wants you. Your faith is what moves God. So when you move, you activate God to move on your behalf. But you think, well, the Holy Spirit came to teach me. So Holy Spirit, teach me. But you never open your Bible. You never get on your knees and pray not for what you want, but just pray and talk to God. See, you have to do something to activate God in your life. God's always there because His promise is, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. See, but yet we pray, oh God, I need you to be with me today. And God's like, uh, I already am. <laughs> because He is. Because that's His covenant. That He would not leave us nor forsake us. He won't let you fall. But you got to be willing to get close to Him so that you have no opportunity to fall. Amen? Turn to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And remember, I, I read from different translations, so don't say, well, that's not in my Bible. <laughs> If you don't have this Bible, it's probably not. That's simple enough, right guys? Because I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. It says this, 31. So what does all of this mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who could ever stand against us? I, I mean, tell me guys. Because I know when I, when I used to fight with gangs, I stood by their side. I didn't leave. So the world gang system understands this concept. That they're going to stick together. They're going to fight together. That's why a lot of our young people join gangs. Because they feel, well, that's a family. But at the end of the day, they're not. Amen? And that's why I stress so much here at the Impact Center about us building relationships because the church should stick together. I got one person, two people that agree with that. We have to be a unified body. The Bible says that when we become one, we'll see God. We have to become one. We can't even look across the room, because somebody over there hurt my feelings today. But yet, here we sit in the presence of God, and we think that's okay. We got to become one, guys. We got to stick together. Because nobody will come against you when you stand together as a unified body. Amen? If you try to do it out there on your own, 
you're going to get hurt because you're out there by yourself. But it's something about when four or five men come together. We're stronger together. That's why we have men to men. That's why we have women to women. That's why we have his girls. That's why we have children's ministry. That's why the Impact Center is here. To develop a oneness to change this city. Amen? I understand. I can't do it by myself. I need you and you need me. And we all need God. Amen? Verse 32. For God has proved His love by giving us His greatest treasure, the gift of His Son. Since God freely offered Him up as the sacrifice for us all, He certainly won't withhold from us anything else He has given. So don't say, well, God don't want to give it to me. Because He won't hold nothing from you as long as it lines up with His purpose and plan. But see, again, when you don't fear God, you won't ask God what His purpose, fear, and plan is. You'll pray for what you want. Amen? And you can say out or amen. It's okay. I'm good with either one. Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be His? God Himself, the judge, who has issued His final verdict over them, not guilty. Some of you need to embrace this verse right here. You came to God. You gave your life to God. You say you're a believer. You say you're a Christian. But yet you still carry the guilt of your past. If you live in the past, you'll die in the present. You have to understand God already rendered a verdict. You're not guilty. So what gives you a right to go against God and say that you are guilty? Your past is in the past. There's only two people that live there. The devil and you. And it's time to let it go. It's time to move forward. It's time to get aligned with what God says about you and not what everybody else says about you or what you even think about yourself. See, I've got to a place in my life where I ask God, what do you think about me? What are you saying about me? Because people are going to talk. You can be doing everything good in your life. People will find something negative to say. If they don't, they'll dig something up. But see, the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, of the brothers, of the sisters, of the body of Christ. So when you go and you dig up something of the past, against somebody else, especially a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ, you just lined up with the devil. I know some of you are saying, okay, I'm coming to the altar. I'm repenting because I've done that before. Good. We'll have a time. You need to repent because that's not God. And I know some of you may be thinking, well, they weren't a Christian or they're not a Christian. Not yet. You don't know when they're going to become a Christian. You're just assuming that they're not a Christian. Amen? The Bible tells us we're not to do that. We're to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 34. When then is left, who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one. For he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen exalted and enthroned by God at His right hand. So how could He possibly condemn us since He continually prayed, listen, continually prayed for our triumph. Jesus Christ Himself is praying for you continuously. Well, Pastor Ray, you have to pray for me. Look, I don't have to pray for you. Jesus is already praying for you. What better person than the Jesus, the one that suffered, died, rose, sits at the right hand of God, talking to God in intercession for you. What better person do you need? But see, it's the pastor's job. 
Let me let me let me help you with verse 34 just a little bit. Can I help you just a little bit more? Okay, there's about six of y'all, so I'm gonna help all six of y'all. So, what this scripture is, not only does the Holy Spirit pray for us, listen, so does Jesus Christ. Y'all see that, right? Good, I'm glad you see it. Here's what's happening. Two divine intercessors are praying for you each day. Two-thirds of the Trinity are actively engaged in intercession for you and me. Oh, somebody should have just shouted. Somebody should have clapped. Somebody should have just took off running. Because we think we need man or woman to pray for us. Listen, guys, you got two-thirds of the Trinity that is praying on your behalf. What better people can you have? I, I, I just, I can't understand why you guys are so quiet. I really can't. But I mean, that's it. Man, when I seen that, I was like, ushers, catch me because I'm falling. <laughs> I never realized that I have two-thirds of heaven, of the Trinity, that's praying for me. I don't need y'all to pray for me no more. I need the kids. Y'all kids keep going. I don't know about these adults. Two-thirds. Ooh, y'all still can't get it. That's all right. I'm going to leave it alone. Maybe y'all just need to marinate Maybe caught you by shock. I mean, I don't know. It is what it is. All right, Mac, they're not getting it, so I'm going to just move on. Can I move on, Sam? Okay, praise the Lord. Who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Yes. Absolutely nobody. Yeah. Only you can separate yourself from him. Yeah. You, Satan, listen to me. Quit giving Satan so much authority over your life. He has power, but he has no authority until you give him that authority over your life. See, but we have to come together. We have to come together and seek the face of God for what God wants to do. Amen? But absolutely nobody can separate you from the love of God. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love towards us. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. How many of you have troubles in your life? Raise your hand. I do when I get ready to lift this thing up. How many of y'all have pressures in your life? Raise your hand. Okay, here's a trick question. How many of y'all have problems in your life? Raise your hand. Look at Cooper. Cooper said, I got a big problem. <laughs> here's what the Bible says. Even all that you're going through in your life does not separate you from the love of God. We're the ones that make the problem bigger than our God. See, we tell our problem to everybody, so we amplify it. Why don't we amplify the one that has a solution to that problem? That's what we should do. Hey, my God is a big God. He is my daddy. He's my Abba. He's my Bobby. I was hoping Pastor Karina would talk about Bobby. Not because of me, but that's what I call him. He's my poppy. He's, hey look, two-thirds of heaven's got my back. So there's not a problem that can come up in my life that's going to move my position from God. Because I understand my place in the kingdom. And I make my God bigger than every challenge, every problem, every pressure, Anything that the devil knows, my God is bigger than that. Let me keep going. 
Well, what about persecutions? What about dangers? What about death threats? I got them all. Yeah, I got my life threatened. It happens. What are they going to do? Kill me? I know exactly where I'm going. See, some of y'all are scared to die. Why? Because you don't know where you're going. But when you're secure and you understand, hey, yo, I'm sitting in heavenly places. Go ahead and kill me. That's less taxes I got to pay. I'm just saying. I'm group. I'm good. I'm not scared if somebody kills me. They're the ones that have to be scared when they touch God's anointing. And here's the thing. You don't always have to kill somebody by shooting them, stabbing them, running them over with a car. Your words. Because the Bible says that the power of death and life is in your tongue. So when you're not speaking exhortation, you're not lifting somebody up, you're not giving them praises, you know what you're doing? You're speaking death. Well, I never said nothing about you. That's on Facebook. You typed it. There's no difference. Oh, well, it's on Instagram. There's no difference. It's still your thoughts. The fear of God won't let you even think something negative about somebody. Y'all better read Psalms 139. No, for they are all important to hinder the omnipoint love. For they are all important, right? Impotent. Impotent. To hinder the omnipotent love of God. Verse 36. Even though it is written, all day long we face death threats for your sake, God. We consider to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Yet even in the midst of all these things, we, say we. we. You mean me? Yeah, you. We triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. He has demonstrated love. His love or love is our glorious victory over everything. Let me explain to you more than conquerors. Okay? Because I had to deal with this question with God. And some of you, oh, I'm more than a conqueror. You say it, but have you asked God, if I conquer something, how can I be more than a conqueror? I had to ask God, because I'm like, look, I need to know. If I already conquered this deal, what makes me more than a conqueror? Because you called me that. That's my name. So tell me, what is more than a conqueror? Here's what God told me. When you're willing to go through the process, you're willing to endure the change that you have to go through in your life to become a conqueror, the more than is you went through the process, you learned from the process, and now you help somebody else. See, we all want to be more than conquerors, and you don't even know what you conquered. You don't even know how it got there. But see, when you understand that there's a root issue, and you have to get help, and you have to go through the process, and you find out how did this get there, now I can help somebody. Amen? Amen? Like I have guys that have come up to me and say, Hey, look, man, you mentioned how you and your wife, you know, have been going on, you're going on almost 30 years married and you went through stuff in your life. I want to know how did you do it? The fact that I can explain to him and bring him revelation is making me more than a conqueror. See, that's the deal. If you haven't conquered nothing and you don't know how you conquered it, you're not going to be able to help me. Amen? But if you can tell me, look, see, it's okay to have head knowledge, but it's a whole lot better to have revelation. Because if a lot of you have head knowledge. You've read the Bible from Genesis to the Max. You try to take apart that last page to see if there was anything else there. 
but it hasn't become your life. You read a good book, but has the book become life? Amen. Will it speak to you? Will it challenge you to change? Will it bring conviction? It most definitely will. Yeah. But some of you just read the book. God wants you to become what's in the book. Mm, that's just revelation from heaven. Glory to God. I know y'all just thinking, man, I want to see him lift that up. That's all y'all thinking about. Let me break down verse 37. Lord has made us more than conquerors in four ways. Number one, no situation in life can defeat us or dilute God's love. Number two, we know that divine love and power work for us to triumph over all things. Number three, we share in the victory spoils of every enemy we face. See, somebody should have got happy about that one. Isaiah 53 and 12, verse 12, tells us this, that we're going to share in, their, in the spoils of the victory. Number four, we have conquered the conqueror with merely a glance of our worshiping eyes. Come on, where's the worshipers are in the house? I didn't even hear a word. See, right there. Your worshiping eyes help you conquer situations in your life. We have won His heart. We, in worship, let me tell you something. In worship, we win the heart of God. Because worship is what God gets. Our worship should be a sweet smelling fragrance into his nostril. When you worship God out of obedience, it fills the courtroom with your fragrance. And it causes daddy to be pleased by your worship. You can find that in Song, in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9, chapter 6, verse 5. Let me read that last verse. verse no, last two verses of Romans. Verse 38 says, Now I live with the confidence that there is, there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from the, God's love. Amen. I'm convinced. See, we got to get to a place of being convinced. You got to get to that place of being convinced that His love will triumph over death. Life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken His love. Let me tell you something. If nobody ever tells you they love you, God loves you. God loves you. You don't have to try to find love in a woman or a man. God loves you. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love which He lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. See, let me explain to you what I'm doing today. I'm trying to bring you as misfits, rejects, as remnants, ones that people don't want to be with, the ones that people don't want to hang out with, the ones that uh, feel like, man, nobody loves me. I'm trying to bring you in alignment today and help you to understand that when you get into alignment with God and you get into alignment with a church that preaches the truth, not a compromise word. There's help for you. You're not in a battle by yourself. See, you think, man, I've been battling by myself. I'm trying to tell you, you're not battling by yourself. For example, if I could get Paul and Jacob to come back up. Take some of those weights off. <laughs> now, I'm going to show y'all something. Okay. Can you lift that up by yourself? 
Can you lift it up by yourself? <laughs> you should always it, <laughs> You should always be lifting weights in the spirit. Okay. In a natural, they can't. But let me tell you how the body of Christ should work. Yeah, pick it up. See how they're able to do it together? The problem is you've been trying to carry everything on your own. Amen. You're not going to do it on your own. But when you join together with brothers and sisters in Christ, you're able to go through the process. Go ahead and put it down. Let's take that 45 on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now lift that up. You came to church. This is a workout church. <laughs> yeah, you notice they picked that up a lot easier, right? Yeah. That's how it gets when you're working together. Go ahead and sit down. Take the next one off. Let me help you. Now pick that up. <laughs> see how see how it gets lighter as you begin to feel the weight, the cares, the concerns of the world begin to fall off because you're trusting God, you're trusting your brother in Christ. Go ahead and sit down. Take off the next one. <laughs> I don't want to make y'all look that bad. Now pick that up. You see how when you work together? Okay, go ahead and send it down. Eventually it's just you and God. But he's brought people by your side to help you in your process to carry the load. You don't have to fight it by yourself, guys. God is with you. And He's brought brothers and sisters to walk in alignment with you. You've been trying to fight the fight by yourself. And let me tell you something. You're going to have a fight. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have issues. But it's something about when you come together with brothers and sisters in Christ that won't put your junk on Facebook that won't come and tell, tell your sister in women to women or your brother in men to men, hey, let's pray for brother Teron because he's struggling with this. Instead of just saying, hey, let's just pray for him. Whether you know or not, it's none of your business to convey what he's going through unless he's giving you the liberty to convey it. But we just have a perception, well, I'm just praying for him. I just want us men to get together, and then you put his business out there. God didn't release you, and neither did the wrong. So you don't have a right to talk about him. You've actually now misaligned yourself with God. You wonder why you're in a battle? You wonder why you're getting attacked? What's coming out of your mouth? What are your thoughts against people? See, because if your thoughts don't edify and your words don't edify somebody, you're speaking curses. Y'all better wake up and hear somebody. I don't see how people can go to sleep in here today. Because this is to help somebody. You're wondering why you're in the junk that you in. And you're falling asleep? And I'm helping you? I, I just, I can't fathom that, guys. Oh, well, it's just the presence of the Lord. Really? Come on, quit lying to yourself, man. Because I'm all in the presence of God. You don't see me snoring. 
I'm just trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to help somebody. Did y'all hear Cooper? Cooper said, come on. Even Cooper's telling you, come on. Look, I'm trying to help you. I, I just... Guys, that's one of the greatest things I struggle with. Because this is such a passion for me. And I understand, okay, well, maybe you're not there. Okay. But what is it going to take for you to get there? Why do I still have to spoon feed you? When there's a T-bone steak just waiting on you. When I'm giving you the living word, I'm standing by your side to help you carry the weight and the cares of concern. I've heard from the Lord to give you exactly what He is saying to help you. But yet you don't apply it. Guys, you have to begin to apply the word. You have to apply the word of God. There was a gentleman, I got a text from one of our intercessors, and she texted me, she said, hey, this, this, uh, and I know the guy, um, he's, they think he's having a heart attack. I'm in, I was in Oklahoma City, and they're in Missouri. And he, they text me that, and I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to say? Because see, they don't text me, just to text me like some other people do. All of a sudden, I heard what God wanted me to say and I sent her a prayer. See, she knows she couldn't do it on her own. So she reached out to someone who's going to pray, who's going to intercede. So then I sent a message to her. Look, I have his number, but I don't have hers. So all of a sudden, she texts me her number and I sent her what God was saying from the courts of heaven for this man. And I send it to her. She actually sends me back that he listened to it and it gave them the strength to press through. It's not about me. But it is for one who is obedient to hear God first and not just text back, I'm praying for you. And you never really say a prayer. Guess what? He's totally healed. No heart attack. They can't even find signs of it. See, I'm trying to tell you something. You have to learn how to pray. It's not just, oh Lord, just heal them. If that's all you know, okay, good. That's all you pray. Don't try to do something that you really don't know how. But see, because God has taught me how to go into the courts of heaven and I have access to shift what the devil is trying to do in people's lives, I go into the courts and I declare what God says about that person. And I tell God, you said. See, some of y'all can't talk to God that way because he probably knocked you out. But God has a relationship with me that you can have. You can have this type of relationship with God. You can tap into God. I'm not your God. Don't lift me up. You better put God first. Lift up the name of Jesus is what the Bible says. Don't lift up the name of a man. The Bible says man will fail you, but God never will. Man will leave you, but God never will. So that's the one you need to be exhorting. Amen? Amen? You come and you always depend on whoever is here to feed you. Why aren't you feeding yourself? God has set up a banquet table with everything that you like on that table. See, at my table, there's no vegetables and no macaroni and cheese 
and no mashed potatoes. There's only meat and bread. Because God knows that's what I like. So he set it up for me. And I go to him. And I eat of what he has prepared. I sit before God. I talk to God. I listen to God more than I talk. Because he's got a whole lot more wisdom than I do. But guys, I'm not the only one that can go there. You have access to God too. See, if you think that I'm the only one that can feed you, then you're living under the law. And if you live by the law, then you're cursed by the law. But see, Jesus died. The Bible says that the curtain, and these are some massive curtains, they're not like drapes. You can look it up. Do, do some homework. Look up how big and heavy these curtains were and what it took to open those curtains. But all of a sudden, when Jesus died, instantly, those curtains ripped open and you had access to God. But some of you are still waiting on the high priest. And you don't have to anymore. And I'm not licensing you now for you to say, well, I don't have to go to church anymore. Because that's what people say. Oh, well, he said I could, I could do this myself. Go ahead. Get out there and do it by yourself. See what's going to happen to you. Because the Bible says we, not, we should not forsake. That means stop coming together as the body of Christ. See, you might not like me here on earth. And that's cool, I understand. But I may be your neighbor in heaven. And then what are you going to do? Uh, excuse me, God, can you evict him? God's going to tell you, well, you should have loved him there so you can get used to him here. And I understand that. Not everybody's going to love me. Not everybody's going to agree with what I preach. And I'm okay with that. But guess what? I'm going to love them anyway. Because that's what God has given inside of me. I love you guys whether y'all love me or not. You're the one that has the issues. I don't have an issue. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And I've committed my life to helping you. You don't have to pick up all this weight on your own. But what you do have to do is connect with somebody who can help you. So guess what it's going to take? Relationship. Because could you imagine if we had all these weights back on there? I'm not going to get y'all to do that. Relax. And all of a sudden, I tell them, go ahead and lift it up. And Paul decided not to lift his side up because he doesn't know Jacob. He doesn't trust him. Now Jacob is trying to pick that up by himself. His whole body is going to get out of alignment. But it's something about when the body of Christ comes together to do the work of God. When we come into alignment. Again, we're not going to agree on everything, guys. And it's okay. I'm okay with not agreeing with you on everything. I need you to be okay with me that we're not going to agree on everything. Amen? Amen? I'm going to close with these last things. We must see each other through the blood of Jesus. See, that's the problem why y'all don't like me. Y'all looking at me through the flesh instead of through the blood of Jesus. Could you imagine if God looked at you without the blood of Jesus? Oh, now y'all got it. Oh, now y'all got it. Ushers. Y'all finally woke up. So now I can really start preaching. That's the issue, guys. When you don't look at me through the blood of Jesus, you just made yourself a God. Son, I didn't hear no ooh then. I heard a whole lot of ouches. But that's reality. 
When you can't see someone through the blood of Jesus, even though they're in the midst of the deepest sin that they can be in. Even though they're not serving God. They might be an atheist. They might be serving the devil. If you can't see them through the blood of Jesus, you're no different than them. We got to begin to see each other through the blood of Jesus. See, that's what that illustration was all about. The angels will focus on the blood of Jesus, not on each other. <clears throat> Let me tell you mercy. It stops what we really deserve. That's what mercy is. It stops what you really and what I really deserve, which is hell. Oh, he said hell in church. I sure did. Because that's what we do deserve, is hell. Let me tell you what grace is. It is what empowers us not to sin. It is not to justify our sinning. See, God has given us grace. And we use that so that we can keep doing what we want to do. What we as our own gods want to do. That's not what grace is for. It's to help you stop doing what God is telling you you shouldn't be doing. That's what grace is really for. It is a power source. It is something that you can tap into. That God has freely given you to cause you not to sin. I'm going to end with this scripture. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. The Lord will fight for you while you only need to. Here's what you only need to do. Is keep silent and remain calm. I like that. I like that. Because if you complain, you'll remain. Children of Israel wandered for 40 years. Because they kept murmuring, they kept complaining, they kept griping. You're wondering why you're still in your mess? Have you kept silent and just listened for God and stayed calm? That's what we need to do. Just stay silent as you stand to your feet. Guys, I want you to get into alignment and an agreement with the Word of God. That's what I want you to do. I don't preach anything that's not in the Word. I could have gave you, I think I got about another 10, maybe 7 or 8 more scriptures. So that you can have some meat substance. But the Holy Spirit said, that's enough, right? Sounds good. I don't know where you're at today. Only you know if you're out of alignment with God. Only you know if you've been trying to carry all the weight yourself. Don't play this. I'm going to play something. Come on up, Sam, if you're ready. I want you all to listen to what I'm about to play. Because I want you to understand really what's on the inside of you that God has invested. Go ahead, Sam. Just listen. Lights. called to change the world. You were called to change the laws that have been passed by Congress. You could break the chains of poverty in your neighborhood. You could break the chains of drug addiction, alcoholism, low self-esteem in your high school, in your junior high school, in your college, anger, abuse, all of it. All of it is not a waste of time. You will find moments yeah, where you feel it. inadequate and like you're not called to
this is Steve Wolverton, Media Minister of the Impact Center, and I would like to thank you for listening and sharing this time of worship with us today. Senior Pastor Ray Garcia and the leadership and family of the Impact Center would like to invite you to continue visiting us here on YouTube, and we invite you to join us for live services at 2810 Northwest Sheridan Road, Lawton, Oklahoma. If you can't make it in person, we also live stream our services on Facebook. Follow us at the Impact Center of Lawton, Central Day Impact on Sundays at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We would like to keep you and yours in our prayers, so please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or stop in during service and share a cup of coffee with us.